Uh, today on the program, we'll be having our panelists uh, right here in the latest studios and, of course, uh, from our Abuja studios to look at expectations of 2017 from Nigerians and how what uh, has happened in 2016 can uh, better shape uh, uh, 2017 for us as a people and as a nation. Joining us this evening on the New Year Day is uh, Osita Okechuku. He joins us from our Abuja studios. He's the Director General, Voice of Nigeria. Happy New Year and good to have you join us, uh, Mr. Okechuku. And also right here in our Lagos studios, we have uh, two policy analysts who will be looking at uh, what uh, form of uh, expectation that Nigerians uh, would uh, like to see in the year. Uh, it's uh, Anthony Ehilebo and uh, Ni Akinsiju, both policy analysts. Uh, good to have you, gentlemen, and again, Happy New Year. We'll start off from Abuja and see what uh, the DG of The Voice of Nigeria has. Uh, uh, perhaps uh, let's start off by saying Happy New Year. And uh, when we talk about uh, New Year for you as uh, someone also in government, what does this mean to you before we start looking at some other sectors uh, in our national life? A Happy New Year, Nigerians. A pleasant year ahead. A year of hope that we are happy that Nigerians are seeing what the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, have been doing. That with the little in our coffers, he had shown that transparency, accountability, and prudent management of resources uh, produces results. And what he had done is to focus on infrastructure. And we have a transverse from north to south. We're happy that most of the federal roads are abandoned over the years, some to 10 years, some to five years, some to four good years, is back being constructed. And which means because without infrastructure, nothing can be done. Without infrastructure, you cannot create jobs. Without infrastructure, you cannot produce food for Nigerians. Without infrastructures, our industrial capacity will be very low because uh, products from other, other countries will be cheaper than ours and more qualitative. And luckily, we have seen what it means when President Muhammad Buhari said that the Nigerian people should not lose hope, that if we join him in fighting the war against corruption, that will save a lot, whether the oil price is low or high, to address our critical physical and social infrastructure like education, health, electricity, roads, rail line, airports. And this is what we're seeing in the, we're going to see more of that in the new year. Uh, because luckily, the federal government of Nigeria had also extended the 2006 capital outflow. That instead of uh, closing the capital budget by 31st of uh, December 2016, it had been extended to March 2017. I think I think so much so much for your opening, uh, 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 Mr. Okechuku. I think I, I think we'll have to come back to Lagos. So much for your opening comment. Uh, you've just uh, laid it all out. Uh, perhaps perhaps uh, time for us to bring in uh, Nia Kinsiju here. Uh, for so many, we're, we're talking about a, a happy moment, a happy new year, which is. Uh, one uh, form of greeting that everyone uses all over the world, whether you like, have a happy moment or, or not. Because if you put this on the back of what is happening, let's start with the economy, which uh, definitely for some Nigerians, we saw some states' uh, inability to pay salaries. And uh, for some, uh, they went into the new year without uh, their salaries. So for 2017, looking at what happened in 2016, what are the expectations uh, uh, from some states, especially those that have had more than one and even a second bailout? Yeah, uh, well, I, I think um, we, we need to establish the situation we are in, you know. Uh, 2016 was, um, was a challenging year. It was, um, it was filled up with circumstances that caught up government and policy makers, you know, unawares, you know. Uh, first, looking at 
uh, estimates and uh, proposals for, for administration and economy, even from the budget, budget estimates and uh, assume assumptions like the, rate, the price of uh, crude oil, uh, the rates of uh, exchange and all that. Uh, it took just about three months be before everything just went under, <laughs> you know, and uh, it was principally even from the mainstay of our economy, which is uh, crude oil, you know, we, from the, the very first month of 2016, we had issues. We had issues with price of crude oil, uh, falling from uh, 38, 39, they're about, to about uh, to a low of 26, you know. And as we came out of that, in, uh, uh, starting from uh, April, uh, the Niger Delta uh, crisis started, uh, moving, I mean, uh, uh, the, the, the crude oil production went to as low as 750,000 barrels. Now, I tell people when we complain about recession, that it's not about, it's not particularly about failure of policies. It is principally because our production fell, you know, and the production of uh, crude oil is perhaps, I mean, determines the production, the productive capacity of our economy, you know, and in two consecutive uh, quarters, we fell to as low as 750,000, rising marginally to 1.6, I mean 1.4 uh, thereabout. And by the, by the second quarter, we fell again by, by more than 50%. So that qualified us, or rather that ushered us into the recession, you know. And whatever policy government had been deploying since then, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's just about backing the, the, the fallouts of, of uh, this, uh, this, uh, this issue. Uh, uh, Hilary, let, let me bring you in, because uh, from where he left off, talking about government's fallout, but if you look at it critically, the government had come up with something that many Nigerians thought was novel. They say, for the first time, we'll look away from oil and see how much we can get from other sectors. And uh, he also mentioned uh, the activities of uh, the militant groups uh, in the Niger Delta and how also that helped us. Uh, do you think that's uh, the main reason uh, or some of the reasons why we uh, found ourselves where we are at the moment uh, in our, uh, with our economy? Oh, well, um, Suleiman, let me make myself a little bit happy by telling you Happy New Year, but I, I don't think that represents the true picture of what Nigerians are going through. I, I, uh, and like he said here, which I really want to disagree with, that is as a result of the Niger Delta issues, the fall in oil prices. But anybody who looks at the figures released by the MBS will see that year on year, um, we had already started suffering the impact of the negative downturn in oil prices as far back as third quarter, fourth quarter of 2014, moving into 2015. So the oil, the oil um, price, whatever, didn't really affect our economy because we still had um, a non-oil sector growth. Okay, so when we want to talk about this, it's very easy to put the blame on oil and say that's the cause of our problem. No, that's not the cause of our problem. Inconsistency of policies by this government. This government has turned out to be one of the greatest disappointments in the Nigerian history from 1914 to date. And I'll tell you why, because the expectations were high. I, I'm just, um, before we came on the show, we've been trying to look at the budgets as presented 2016 versus 2017. With 2016, we had so many issues with the budget. It was a, it was a ludicrous budget. And, and up to today, we still do not know the implementation of the 2016 budget. We hear from the Minister of Finance that $752 billion has been released, or so thereabout, has been released into the economy or into the, uh, uh, the, the capital expenditure part of the economy. And they can't account for that money. I'm looking at the budget for 2017. Let's even start with this, the State House. The State House has so many ludicrous components in the budget. It has budgeted close to 100 million for sewage removal. This is something that used to cost less than 30 million in the previous budgets. Ludicrous sums are being put in there. Look, if we do not start to look at pure data and facts and speak from facts, we will get it wrong again in 2017 as, as we speak. The, f the two budgets or three budgets we've looked at, we've looked at interior, we've looked at defense, we've looked at state house. Oh my God, the kind of amounts they're putting in there, you know that that budget is ripe for corruption. As we're speaking now, we're looking at the SGS budget, but tomorrow would have been done with an analysis of that. Again, we're already seeing a lot of imputes in there that reek and smell of corruption. So how is this government telling us they want to fight corruption when with their first fiscal document, it was padded? 
The second document we're getting, we're also getting inconsistencies with it. Now, six months into the tenure of this government, they had not yet appointed ministers. Now, where is the confidence going to come in for investors? Investors are still looking at the country as it is. We're not respecting court orders. So if an investor is going to come into the country, is he going to come into a country that he knows that the government itself does not respect court order? So if he gets a judgment against the government, is the government going to respect that court order? These are, investors, these are what things investors are looking at. Let's not blame things that are not relevant. Right now, countries like India have moved, they're even buying our oil. They're making money from software development. They're looking at generational gas. There's a study that says that the youthful population of Nigeria, between 18 and 35, will be Nigeria's greatest asset by 2030. And we should be looking at that because it's a double-edged sword. If we do not invest in these young people, by 2030, they will become the problem we will have as a country. I, I think that that's one of the things that we're hoping that uh, we'll also explore and see if some of the key sectors and ministries uh, will be looking in that direction as we move into 2017. But I'd like to bring uh, Mr. Okechuku in here, and uh, perhaps uh, you should be able to uh, react to our comments uh, from uh, he level. He's uh, thinking that uh, this uh, has been one of the worst so far. You are also a member of the government. Uh, Perhaps tell us uh, what you think uh, is really wrong, if uh, there is any. And, uh, to be honest with you, I wouldn't know how to address the issue that Tony is saying that at the point when Nigeria was producing 2.2 million barrels of oil per day and selling at $100 per barrel, that it doesn't make any difference from when we are producing 750,000 barrels per day and selling at $38 per barrel. If there's no differential there, I don't know what to say. But uh, we must agree that the figures he banded cannot be thrown off the board. But at the same time, he forgot as well that this same government is saying that doesn't know what he's doing. That this go the same government had trimmed down the totality of the amount being paid monthly on recurrent by instituting what they call art piece, integrated payroll and personal information systems that have cut off between 2015 and today almost 100,000 ghost workers. If he says it doesn't matter, if he says the war against corruption that had and the political will of Mr. President that have brought the TSA and have brought BVN that makes it more difficult now even for public officers to hide money wherever they looted from and that there's nothing done on that level, I don't know what to say. But all that I know is that the Nigerian people are aware that even the youths he's talking about, for the first time in the history of the country, we have 500 billion Naira voted for social investment program.